We're ready. Good afternoon and welcome to the June the 10th Special Committee for Police and Community. Um, my name is Sylvia Ortiz. I'm the chair. I'll have my colleagues introduce themselves if they would, please. Karen Hiller, Councilwoman, District 1. Mike Padilla, Mayor. Thank you. I apologize, I'm a little under the weather, but this must roll on to roll out. Oh, how do you like that, Mayor? <laughs> anyway, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, next is approval of the minutes from June the 3rd. Move to approve. It's been moved by the mayor. Seconded. Seconded by Councilwoman Hiller. All those in favor, raise your right hand. It's 3-0, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is continued discussion um, for the review of draft recommendations. But before we do that, I do wanna address a couple of emails um, that we received, if, if we may. Um, the first one I wanna address is about the SROs. Um, we had an email from Councilwoman Hiller with a concern about the SROs, and um, she is asking, she submitted something that basically asked a couple of questions that I got, and Councilwoman, um, don't hesitate to correct me if I'm, if I'm not correct. Um, number one, in the grade schools, are there SROs? It's my understanding that there is not, that they only go to assist. And Chief, please raise your hand to chime in if, if I'm correct um, when, when needed. Um, so I know some information was shared with us. I'm not gonna divulge that information, but I do wanna take from that information uh, that those, those points and she also asked about the funding and, and Chief Wheelis, if you would speak a little bit um, and reiterate, I know we've had that before, but if you reiterate about the funding, I, I would appreciate that. Yeah, sure can. Um, the current agreement with USD 501, uh, the school district and USD 501 has their own police department as well, but the agreement with the city and specifically as it pertains to the Topeka Police Department employs the school resource officers that are stationed at the middle schools within the district um, is as follows. Six officers, one sergeant, a payment of 247598 uh, which is approximately 35% of the salary and benefits for those seven employees. Uh, obviously, uh, but it's worth stating that the USD 501 Police Department is an entity contained within the USD 501, and so all of the funding for that program is within their budget, and I don't have that information on that piece. Okay, um, I noticed that, um, thank you, Chief, um, the Deputy Chief um, Holtham, he did give us that. If you look in your email, each of us should have documents. And, and if you look in the, in the email, it says, um, USD 501 provides a, a payment of 247,598 for the first segment and or for one sergeant and six officers. And um, this is approximately 35% of the salary and benefits for those seven employees. Is that correct, Chief? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so Karen, do you have any more questions or can we move on to the next thing? Um, I, I will have some more questions on that. If you want those now, that's um, fine. Um, okay. And I just may need some clarification on the difference, it's been 10 years since I had somebody in 501, <laughs> um, the difference between the police department and the SROs. USD 501. The, the 501 police department. Right. And the SROs. Well, well they're, called, they're called T, T, P, what is it, TPS? TPS. Yes, TPS <laughs> and SROs. So let's just think, make sure we distinguish the two and get them correct. TPS is 501, SROs is our officers, is that correct, Chief? Yes. Okay, thank you, go ahead and take over. Uh, the biggest difference, uh, uh, Topeka Public School police officers are employees of the school district and, and are bound by 
the administrative policies of the school district. The school resource officers that are employees of the Topeka Police Department, City of Topeka, um, are fully authorized police officers who are assigned to the schools that they are as part of this collaboration that the chair recognized in regards to the funding sources for those. The, both entities, all the officers involved, are fully certified, accredited law enforcement officers within the state of Kansas. Um, USD 501 police has their own agency number, their own agency hierarchy. Um, we do work very well in collaboration with them uh, on a number of things, but they're, they're two separate entities um, as far as employment section goes. I knew that. Um, in the recommendation, the, the number one recommendation that was uh, the draft that was proposed last week um, made reference, uh, I thought, very well to kind of the different concerns that have been raised, good or bad, about SROs in schools. Um, and it, it addressed them, but what it said was that the SROs should be playing a significant role in building positive relationships with youth, schools, and parents. Selection based on interaction. SROs are not enforcement enforcers of school disciplinary actions. They are mentors and should continue to serve in this capacity. Um, and then it, it, it goes on. We have perennially had an issue about policing in terms of the fact that the if a complaint comes from a school property, the city police say, oh no, that's up to the school police department, TPS. So they don't, they, they waive, they well, that, stay out that, of that jurisdiction. That, that obviously would, wouldn't be an accurate statement for the schools yeah. that have SROs assigned to them, but yeah. I, I well, guess I'm not following if, what you're if, saying. If, if, if the language in what's being proposed, which is our subject right. today, says that those officers should not be serving in the capacity as police officers or disciplinarians, but instead as mentors to the youth, then there's a conflict there, is, is my point. And so I, no. No, no, no. Okay. The, the, the Juvenile Justice Act from a few years ago made it very clear, but, but that's, that's where it gets a little bit muddier. For the police department, the school resource officers that are city of Topeka police officers assigned to those schools, they are not utilized in the function of, of upholding administrative policies for the school. The, that's the assignment of the, the principal and the teaching staff. Now, I don't want to speak too much for what 501 police's role is because they have their own police chief and their own rules and regulations, but we are very much in line currently as far as just talking about the Topeka Police Department SROs with the recommendations that are here. We are, they are not utilized for administrative functions. That's the area of the principal. Now, order maintenance um, and things like that, sometimes they are, but I don't want to speak too much to how the Topeka public school officers are because that's their own policies and their own rules. But the SROs for several years now um, have not been involved in enforcement of the administrative policies of the schools, only laws that are violated. Well, and, and just for everybody's benefit, I think, I, I don't know what kind of communications or just things happen for everybody else in the week since Friday, but I got a constituent complaint of something that something had happened to her child at State Street, and so they called the police who said, no, we won't do it, so you need to call Topeka Public Schools police officers. They did. The officer was involved. And so I'm like, and, and it's an elementary school as well, but it, it ultimately moved to the ombudsman. The principal was involved and the ombudsman was involved at 501, but the police officers were frontline <laughs> involved. And so I was just confused. Well, I think the messaging I, and the reality. It's very difficult to answer this question specifically because we don't have a date and a time, so we don't know exactly what we're talking about. But it's entirely possible for a citizen to say a police officer responded and have that be a USD 501 police officer. Or it's entirely possible, too, if the school called, and I 
believe this is the phrase. I've got the school there. report. Yeah, it was an unwanted <laughs> subject uh, as a disturbance. There could be a situation if there's not a school resource officer, which there's not at the elementary school, um, you know, that, they, that an officer would respond just like any other business, restaurant, or store where they had somebody where there was a disturbance going on. But without the specific date and the time for us to research the call, which <laughs> I didn't have. Oh, um, no. I mean, it just happened so. this week. But they TPD referred to TPS. Right. TPS sent an officer to the elementary school. Okay. Um, and inter got involved, uh, did an incident report. Okay. Um, and it's now in the hands, according to this 501 report, of TPS, TPS right. for investigation. So if I read what you just said, then this is completely an internal USD 501 involved personnel school issue? Yes, but our, again, our, the subject of our day is whether we're going to recommend the, the draft, which just ref, references SROs in general. But there wasn't an SRO involvement in this, was there? Well, if all TPS officers are SROs, that's what I was trying to find no. out. No. So no. You're, the only ones we call SROs are the ones that we pay for that are at the high school? The, well, US. We pay for it. <laughs> UST 501 and, and, and the city of Topeka collaboratively pay for the officers that are assigned to the, so uh -huh. that is first thing. But yeah, school resource officers, I, I think that's what the, the chair, and I certainly don't want to speak for her, but that's what she was referring to. Topeka public school officers are employees of the school um, and work within that hierarchy. School resource officers, and, and they, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I've never heard them interchange that um, so I think school resource officers, maybe that's the, we're finally getting to what your question is. Well, uh, you're, in your mind, it's a broader term. In our school resource officers, when I say it and when I use it, I'm talking about the Topeka Police Department mm -hmm. officers that are assigned. Um, that RSRO policies, RSRO practices, that's what it's my purview to talk about as the chief of the police department for the city of Topeka. Um. Thank you. Back to our consideration of the day, and I don't know if we're going to do anything with any of this today, but I think it's important that the, the language here, if you read it without insider knowledge, one would think that it applies to any police officer in the public schools. So. No, no, they, they, I, think, I think our citizens, are, they, they are aware of who's SROs and who's Topeka Public Schools. Um, the reason why I mentioned it as that way, I put it in there that way, is because there was a lot of misinformation that SROs were um, enforcing rules and they're not. And so that's why I distinctly put that in there as a recommendation because it came from a couple of us that that, was, that needed to be made very, very clear. Um, that they they are not enforcers, but they are there basically to keep and 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 to uh, to, to keep um, order. I, I spoke with a lady yesterday. I happened to call a grade school um, even before I asked for clarification to to be reminded of that. Let me let me tell you what our SROs can do. Our SROs get called to the schools because they are officers. Um, they get called to the schools to remove children that are abused. They get called to the schools to meet the caseworkers there. Um, and I talked to a secretary at Quincy Elementary, and the last day of school, she had to call a SRO over because a grandmother had custody of a child and the mother showed up to get it. So. You know, these these are some of the things that, that they do, um, that they have to do. And, and there's some things when they, um, because Topeka Public Schools, I, I know, Karen, when, when my daughter and your son was there, um, I don't know if you remember any any of the staff there. There was Kayla, there was Gary. And, and then that's kind of when, when we intertwined and we kind of put some, officers there and my question it was why why do we need SROs and they said and they told me because there's things that they can do that the peak that the the uh, Topeka public schools officers cannot do so 
most parents know that there's two entities. I think this speaks to educating them. Um, <clears throat> I, I spoke with, well, I, I believe I spoke, right now I can't remember who I spoke with, but I believe I spoke with the chief. Uh, um, no, I didn't speak with the police chief yet. We needed to do a better job because um, in educating, and I think that um, maybe I talked to the deputy, uh, the mayor, but I talked to somebody about this. We need to do a better job of educating our parents because when they go to elementary school, if you're not involved, you, you don't see the SRO officer. But then when you get to junior high, here's this SRO officer, and we need to do a better job of meeting and greeting and um, having him follow through at the beginning so he can meet parents and so that he can meet the kids and let them know it's okay. Because the average parent dropping off their kid at 7.30 in the morning, quarter, quarter to eight, you know, they see a cop car, which his car is right in front. Um, what's going on? Because they're not used to that SRO being there. Um, and so we need to do a better job of educating the parents, meet and greeting the parents. I will be talking to the chief about this. I will be talking to Dr. Anderson about this all over the city so that parents, when they do drop their kids off, they'll understand why that car is there and not just see that it's right there in front because he's parked right there in front. Um, but he's able to do a lot of things that the TPS can't, uh, officers can't do. And Chief, if you want to elaborate on any of that, you feel welcome to. But that's why I distinctly put that in there because I think it needs to be loud and clear that our recommendation is that they're not enforcers, but they are to, to be there to, um, again, exactly how it was wrote, um, to be mentors and, and to, break, to break down that barrier. Is Madam. there anybody else? That, uh, Karen, are you done? My point is that not everybody knows what you know, and when it refers only to, to so if, if it's going to stay, it would probably help to have a definition in there so that for people who are not familiar, I mean, one of the things that many of us in the neighborhoods near some of the schools have is the inner, is, is when the kids are out of school and they're in a park or they're going down the street or somebody ran off the school property and now they're out, you know, that interface between TPD and, and TPS and SRO and just what the difference is between the three um, I, <coughs> for the very reasons that you're talking about educating parents and the public further my point really was it's, it's not clear where the line is by just what we said and somewhere perhaps a clarification would help okay, okay. I, could, I can accept <laughs> I, can, I can accept that um, because we have a lot of educating to do. Maybe I just had bad kids and that's how I knew who all the TPDs, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. But, but I also go to the schools and I also talk to them. So, so um, you know, we, we just need to do a better job of, of educating them. I, I would agree with that. Um, Mayor, do you have anything to add to this? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. <clears throat> I think, I don't want to say it's a simple fix, but I think as you state I think there are more people who are aware of the differences than you might give them credit for councilwoman but in a document that we're going to put forward we're comfortable I know I am chief is and others with the term SROs because we know very clearly that the difference maybe we need to rather than use that that uh, initialing Topeka Police Department school resource officers. It spells that out that they are not USD 501 uh, because a lot of people see that uniform and they don't differentiate between TPD and TPS. But I think for the most part, people understand the different roles. But if we clearly identified SROs as Topeka Police Department school resource officers, at least in a document that sets them out from TPS police officers. Because I don't believe, and I'm not, like the chief says, 
I'm not going to overstate, but I don't believe within the USD 501 that they refer to their police officers as SROs. Uh -huh. They are just Topeka public school police officers. So just as a, a suggestion, I understand what Councilwoman Hiller is saying, but uh, I don't think it is, it is as confusing. Uh, if you're in the school system and uh, you've had the opportunity or unfortunately had the opportunity to have to interact uh, with TPS and TPD on a situation, I think the roles are clear. But I think maybe for those who do not um, see that distinction that in, every, in our documents, wherever SROs appear, and it refers to Topeka Police Department, police officers or school resource officers, that it should have that full name out rather than SROs. Just a suggestion. Okay, that, that's a good suggestion. Um, I also wanted to add that the Attorney General, um, I meant to get that information before we met. I don't know if the Chief has heard about it, but he's gotten extra money that he will be putting S, uh, extra SROs in, um, um, he, he's going to add more money to get at more SROs. So that was that was very very um, that was very awesome to hear. It was, it was really. Um, but 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 I will try to get more information on that. Okay. So, Madam, Madam, Madam Chair, yes, I think, I think the chief might have some clarification on that. And myself, when you said they're going to add more SROs again, <laughs> school resource officers from the Topeka <laughs> Police Department or Topeka Police Officers, so I think they're that even them and their messaging. Where does that money go? And then maybe the chief has some detail on that. Well, what it said was SRO, so that's you know school resource officers. Okay. Yeah. Not to yeah. police officers or not to be good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I, I definitely could speak to that in a minute. I, I just had a question that if if you'll allow me to ask a question. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just, I guess I'm a little confused. Um, this is, this committee was put in panel to make recommendations for the Topeka Police Department and the Topeka community, right? I mean, uh -huh. and like I said, I, I just, I'm, I'm sure if Chief Generette from 501 Police were here, he, he would have wanted to be part of the process of, or is it the committee's intent to make recommendations to the school district too? Because I think I think we need to make. <laughs> I guess I just need the clarity on the recommendations are for the Topeka Police Department SROs, and maybe that'll help clear it up as well. I I, I didn't know if the document was going to go to 501 with recommendations as well or, or not. Well, I was just merely taking some concerns. But I'm I'm really looking at the Topeka SROs. That's who I'm looking at. I'm not looking at uh, Topeka Public Schools officers. I'm not looking at them. Yeah. So that's why I I um, I put that the way that I did. Yeah. And speaking to the, uh, I believe the information that you're talking about. I I just happened to read a couple articles before I came over here. But um, it definitely was uh, the Attorney General um, six point plan he has for his answer to, to re recent school safety concerns. And one of those points was additional funding. There clearly are some other people at the federal level that are talking about, um, I've heard proposals for reallocation of COVID money that's still left around to uh, harden schools and safety and security. So I think there's a broad number of topics, but you're right. They did, they did refer to school resource officers, I think in a much broader term, but we always have to remember here in Topeka, we kind of have a different system because there are a lot of places where either it's a standalone school district police department or it's the local police department, the municipal police department who provides school resource officers. Um, and so we have that combination here that's a, that's a little different and probably leads to a little bit of confusion for those people that aren't. But I think you're right, nationally and, and definitely across the state, school resource officer is more of a general term than what we're talking about here in the city. And, and, and if I may, that was my point. Also, we have a, I, I don't know about everybody else, but my pile of stuff from our two year, or from a year and a half is that tall and included and even referenced maybe in this final report, a lot of people really read the governor's task force report and, and, and thought a lot of that and we'll be bringing those thoughts forward to see what we come up with. And if I recall correctly, well, look at Danielle, she remembers all this stuff like a computer. Um, this, 
this, the governor's report referenced schools, resource officers, maybe by that term or another, in general, uh, okay. regardless of where they came from. So again, for, for our wording to make it clear what we're talking about the best that we can, and I, your, your suggestion, Mayor, may do the trick. That, I just wanted to bring up those points of potential confusion. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Okay, let's let's move on. Um, the next thing that I had was um, <coughs> uh, Karen had add about had uh, asked about the policy review. Let me see. Sorry about that, guys. She had asked whether the question was, the question would be whether TPD's personal review forms have been updated to reflect the updated TPD administrative policy and priorities. Uh, Chief? And the, the, the short answer is no, with a little bit of an explanation. Um, currently in the city of Topeka, the executive management group is there, because the administrative forms, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you're talking about are, are in regards to the evaluations, in regards to personnel evaluations. Mm -hmm. um, so the executive management team at the city is currently, those personnel evaluations annually that are done, are done in a, in a database. There's no paper, it's all completely automated. And the city is looking at moving all of the city and uh, one of the one of the test agency or departments they're going to use because it's one of the bigger ones is the police department so we haven't changed the paper forms because the paper forms very well may be going away um, so i made the decision it wasn't a really great time to revamp paper forms when we could be switching over to or will be switching over to a database so that language will be incorporated into the screen by screen question evaluation period of the database but it hasn't been changed on the paper forms because we're we're making slow but steady steps towards paperless every day. So that's the short answer. No uh, status update, we have not done it yet, but that's the reason why. Okay. Councilwoman Hiller, do you have any questions? Um, no, I guess. I went back because I couldn't find my marked up papers that, that you and I had visited about some time ago. It was August 31st last year when sure. um, staff secured those for us to look over and talk about. Uh, I guess I hope that it's a priority. And I don't know if we need to say anything. I was hoping the answer was going to be yes and we could double check what was updated and it wouldn't be in this final report. But to me, if you've updated your policies and procedures, if it hasn't, if it's not reflected in the personnel review, then it's just conversation. And, and so particularly, um, I, I found them again and pulled them up today to prepare. Um, the issue of the duty to intervene is not there. One could make it and, and- The issue to duty to intervene is intertwined in numerous sets of our policies and has been for a long time. In terms of the review. The, the clarity of that duty to intervene. Oh, specifically the evaluation forms is yes. what you're talking about? No, mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah. There hasn't been any updates on that. Correct. And so it it just would be nice if those were done before we, we finished so that we knew that closing the deal was there. I like to give you lots of yes answers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit the timeline between now and then. I mean, there's a lot of pieces from a a citywide complete I'm sure there HR. Are more. I didn't have that many. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> just, it's unfortunately it's not it's a it's not just a police department um, scope either. They're sure. they're moving beyond the executive team. So, and I I don't want to say it specifically, but I think it was a couple years before we got the executive management team all the way through the process too. So. Okay. I'm I'm not hopeful for <clears throat> July uh, of this year. So. That's okay. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, you may. Uh, Councilwoman, um, to clarify for me, the uh, responsibility or the duty to intervene, as the Chief suggests, is intertwined in uh, just about all, all their training. Are you asking specifically, is that 
uh, I guess a category checkbox or whatever that would be on a personnel review form for a supervisor to be able to indicate whether or not an officer understands and practices that or is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, that one, um, the things that have really ramped up and when I looked over the, the review form again and it's been a while, it appears that the de-escalation is pretty clear. That I think they, I think the PD does a wonderful job with the layout and the style that they do. I'd said that before and I still think so. Um, but what they do is have an overall heading and then some examples of what kinds of things they're looking for. It, it appears to me that, that um, again, we're, we're starting to get communication of the hot button thing, so double checking that the de-escalation is pretty well addressed even in more than one case, either to make sure it, a situation starts as unescalated as possible or that you get it there. Um, the We've worked so much on multicultural comfort um, with people of diverse race, ethnicity, religion, gender identity, abilities and disabilities, that it seems that at this point it's worth having that mentioned. It, it seems to fit under um, either teamwork or leadership, the way you guys have it laid out. Um, and, and it appeared to me that use of force was addressed adequately. So it was really just those two things that we've spent so much time on that that were worth it to kind of bring in for a landing. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Mike, do you have any comments, questions? No, thank you, Chair. Okay. I also received um, that I thought, or maybe all of us received, uh, email from Arian Davis. I could probably function if my headache went away. <laughs> okay. Um, what I took from her email was that um, she wanted She wanted to know, and I'm not finding, oh, here we go. She wanted to know how, um, the, how policy has changed, um, what it entails, and she wants us to sit down with um, the chief and rewrite the policing policies. And um, I'm gonna say this, I know we're not going to please everybody. Um, and I, I talked, Chief, I'll give you, I'll give you a minute to, um, go, go ahead, Chief. Can you, can you address this? and, and um, also address what it entails? Yeah, I can. Um, and I, I think the deputy chief in, in this email gave, gave some pretty good answers, so I'm gonna kind of refer to that as well. Uh, and, and, and that's okay, but you have to remember, they didn't get, they didn't get, nobody has that but us. I will attempt to be as clear as I, as I can, um, and I'll, I'll be open to questions. Uh, first of all, I think the first thing is is that as a CLIA organization, and we've talked about that before, we're, on, we're in a constant state of policy review. Um, there are several things that we do here at the police department too uh, for a number of years now that go back to even when Chief Cochran was the, the chief of police. We've had our, our policies publicly published on the uh, website for a number of years. The reason why that's not only for citizen education but also for citizen participation because we, we do get with on a regular basis um, input back from citizens who, when they read and review those policies, send us suggestions, send us their input, give us examples um, to illuminate those kind of situations. CALEA is an outside organization that's internationally recognized that comes in and reviews our policies and makes us, has us provide proofs 
uh, which show that we, we do what the policies say they do, whether it's case works or case studies or, or documentations of, of corrective actions. So it's not just that these are the policies that are written down, but you have to prove them to the outside agency. And they are here every year in one capacity or another, going from a virtual policy uh, review on, on one year all the way to an on-site inspection in, in a two or three year rotation. So we have that from an outside source. We, we have a committee inside the police department that is made up of, of commanders, the legal staff, um, which always review the policies too. We review them on, a, on an incident basis. We review <laughs> them on a when court case precedent, legal, the law changes with evolving. Those things, we get information and input and participation from all levels of city government, whether it's the mayor, the city manager, the city council, or city legal staff. All of those things are available. So, so I guess the short answer to all of that is we have the ability to evolve and morph the policy on any specific topic, and we have a lot of them, um, that are covered to be able to be flexible as a modern law enforcement agency to adhere to the community expectations, to, but also within the legal parameters and the personnel matters that we have to. So there's a lot of things that culminate, but it's a very, very robust policy review process. The policy review committee meets all the time uh, to go over one things or another. And I guess the big part I wanted to re reiterate is we get lots of different information from lots of sources, including the community, um, that we look at, that we answer questions about the policies, and that often bring up uh, changes and evolutions in the policy, as well as the uh, internationally recognized CALEA organization. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty extensive to do that, correct? But you do it on a, the conversation me and you had, you said you do it on a yearly basis or Right, and, or, or if we have any of those situations, we have the ability to review and evolve a policy at any given time that we need to through the year. If there is nothing that occurs in a year on a specific topic, then it's set on a regular schedule where it comes up for review even if we don't change it. So the committee is always reviewing policies on a schedule basis, but we have the ability to move anything that we need to to the front based on whatever um, is going on, what the concerns are that come up, or if the law changes, legal precedent changes. Um, we need to make sure that we can evolve and, and make sure the model policy is in place. So we have the ability on any given day to make a modification on the policy, and that's one more thing I wanted to do. And I know we've talked about it for the committee, but to educate the public, we have those policies, and when they change, they go out electronically in that power DMS system that we've talked about. And the employees are given a certain amount of time to review that, and then they have to sign and acknowledge that they've done the change. So it's not just a matter of us changing it, and <coughs> there's an acknowledgement on an individual employee basis that we're able to track and pull up and produce and are required to produce um, from a CALEA inspection that's a circle around accountability piece when we make those changes, too. Thank you. Um, do any of my colleagues want to add anything or have any questions? Karen? Um, it's, it's interesting to have this conversation. I read that letter and, and had different things that popped to my attention. And I, I did have a couple of things that I thought would resolve that in terms of what the proposals are. What I read here was, OK, fine, you're going you're gonna to up, up the duties of the Civil Service Commission, but if all they're going to do is oversight based on the current policy, what's the point? <laughs> now, that's the Cliff's notes on, on how I read it. And, and what we've had is a lot of citizen input about being able to observe something that they think needs improvement and have a communication channel that will then turn around and move that forward into the department or wherever it needs to go. And when I went back and reread the, the proposals as written today, words, um, the the language about um, review of the, S of the school resource officer activities currently says um, that the, I'm, 
I'm paraphrasing, okay, if I can, says that the school, school district and the city will get together quarterly to review it. But it doesn't mention citizen input on that process. And maybe citizen input wouldn't be quarterly, but mentioning that from our point of view, there should be citizen input on a regular basis. And that, that doesn't mean anything new from what I know. 501 has an equity council, they have PTOs, there's all kinds of places where citizen input could occur. But mentioning that we expect there to be citizen input could solve some of that concern from this letter. Um, and then in the same way, um, our section in the recommendations on use of force says it's recommended this, that this policy be reviewed on an ongoing basis. Um, but if we slipped in there with citizen input, that might satisfy, again, what we've heard a lot of. Um, this particular language doesn't say how often or whatever, it just... I guess that's, that's the point I was trying to make, and maybe I, I didn't make it very clear. Uh, uh, with technology the way it is, uh, citizen input or citizen participation is is always available. I mean, that's the point of the of I mean the chief's office email and the. the phone I understand numbers. that. So, but I mean, this this recommendation it doesn't is have a to statement. be necessarily an in person meeting. I guess is what. No, I'm and saying. I don't think so either. You know, this just saying with citizen input doesn't doesn't define how often or how it would come in. But it's a message from this committee in this city that. We're hoping, we're looking for that, and and are eager to have it. Okay. And 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 it, I hadn't noticed it on the first read through that it was missing, but the letter popped that for me. And and I, I am eager to have that too. I, I discuss policy with citizens in lots I know of different you do. formats. And so it's it's just we can't make assumptions of things that we know that aren't here. Okay. It's Words matter, and so I thought that 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 raised that point for me. And third, in the description that we have of the Civil Service Commission's new role, and I have this written down, by the way, so I didn't have to write it down, but if we added a line at the end of the first sentence that describes how we would envision expanding the role of the Civil Service Commission, if we added just a single sentence that says, the Civil Service Commission's duties would include advocating to the police department and or the governing body where they see evidence of the need for consideration of policy or procedure change. That would make it clear that they're not just reviewing against current policy, but that they that we would we would hope that if they saw something they thought needed improvement that they would speak up. Well, the reason why I didn't add anything like that, Karen, is because, first of all, it wasn't in anybody's recommendation. And second of all, um, the, the Civil Service Commission is going to have to be revamped, totally revamped. Um, and the mayor, he's, he's going to be responsible for doing that. He's going to be responsible for how many people and all. So I, I felt like that was something that went back to them on, on on when they when they revamp the civil service, um, it'll it'll go back to the mayor and what he decides or what what team he puts together or however he decides to do it. I didn't feel like it should it should come out of this committee. I think, uh, I'm sorry. I I was I you know there's other I'm sure I'm not going to speak for the mayor. He can speak for himself, but I'm sure there's other duties that he would um, he has a vision for now that he's heard this. Um, um, because I, I believe that he, he was in agreement with it, me that this could come under the civil service. I think we heard, um, I call her Sister Watson, you know, um, loud and clear when she said they, they could do more. I think they're a, a good group of people um, and they're qualified people. And, and um, so I, I didn't, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on that and I don't think we should really hash that out. I'm, I'm comfortable with what, what I have in there. But I'm just speaking for me. Mayor, I don't know if you want to add anything, and if you don't, that's fine. But I'm not going to sit here and put that make the mayor's board together when he, he has to do that. Thank you, Chair. You know, um, there are a lot of things that I'm considering right now with regards to boards, committees, and how we proceed. I think for some time now we've done 
things the same way for a while because uh -huh. it's tradition or what we're used to. Um, I think if we're going to have a standing board or commission, it has to serve a true purpose and not just a uh, uh, check in the box that we have one in place. And to do that, we have to really think about not just the composition of our committees, but the responsibility that we're asking city members to accept. I think for too long now, uh, uh, and I'm not overly criticizing the volunteer work that our, our citizens have done, but we have to move forward and to move forward, we have to change our intent and our goal and our purpose. And as you suggest, uh, Councilwoman Ortiz, I've got some thoughts and ideas. Certainly, uh, they're not made in a vacuum. Uh, the governing body will be uh, taken into uh, that role of helping me come to what I think is something that will work for the city and be presented to the governing body. But it is, as you say, my responsibility and my role. And I want to be able to have that understanding that I'm open to suggestions and ideas, but I don't want to get myself put into a corner that says, you have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Because we're in that corner right, right now. Mm -hmm. And that, well, we've always done it this way, so we have to do it this way. There's a couple things I can think of right now that are not moving forward because I've said very clearly, if certain council members don't follow through with their responsibilities and duties, it is not my job to correct them or to get them to do their job. They know what their job is. And the same way will come with the commission members and the committee members. Um, when they accept that position, it will be with a full understanding of what the scope of their responsibility is. So uh, I, uh, I very much appreciate the comments that we're hearing, but you know, I, we've said this before, they elected all of us to represent the city and everybody, not just the ones who send emails to us. Those who don't send emails to us still have to have a voice as well. And so I'm cautious about running too quickly into doing what uh, a few emails direct us to do. So those are my comments. Thank you. Karen? Uh, I, I, I have I can't to respectfully. See you, so. I can't see you, so don't, don't hesitate to chime in. Oh, oh OK. I'm well, not trying to avoid you. OK. Respectfully, um, any of our commissions are, are voted in by the governing body. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the subs one of the key issues throughout this entire year and a half that we've worked on this is citizens wanting a place where they could go where their voices would be heard and that that it wasn't a dead end um, we created we in the process so we heard lots of ideas about how to do that anything from an independent review board to the various commissions that we've had before to um, actually changing the Human Relations Commission ordinance to allow people to bring complaints, to have them review the IPA reports and have any complaint and complaints or concerns brought to them. Their charter includes a responsibility to review things and, and, and to feel free to raise issues if they choose. It sounds like maybe that's not the, the final destination. Maybe that's not the best place, but it was a big enough issue that as far as I'm concerned, part of the final recommendations out of this group would be where citizens can go to raise issues, whether it's specifically incident related or not. And we had a lot of conversation, talked about a lot of those ideas, and I agree that it, it seemed like expanding the scope of the Civil Service Commission was, was kind of where, where the conversation evolved. So I'm fine with that. 
I just think it's very important as we wrap up this process for this, for the recommendations and what we're, what we're recommending and then what, what the council finally um, endorses, let's hope, is includes a clear path for citizens to raise concerns. And it, because it looks like the Civil Service Commission is the place and, and there's some very specific things about how the nomination should occur and so on, it seemed appropriate to add that piece at this time. So I'll stand by that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. So that is number four, right, Karen? Yeah. On my new list? <laughs> yeah, on your new list. That is. I mean, actually, what I just went over is 1B. You know, if we added citizens to the school resource officer. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, and it really wasn't that one letter. It was the fact that, that that theme has been part of the issues that the reason we're here. Okay. So. Don't lose me. Don't lose me. Hold on. Hang, hang with me, okay? Okay. Yep. I, I, got, I got a headache and I'm trying. I'm really trying here. You are. Number four, okay. is, you're correct. That was what okay. I just read. Okay. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the school resource officers. And you wanted that spelled out instead of SROs. You wanted the school resource officers. Uh, you wanted instead of SRO, you wanted it spelled out. Is that correct, or or you wanted it? Uh, you wanted SROs defined and TPD or Topeka Public Schools defined. Is that correct? The, the mayor's suggestion should work just to clarify that we're talking about the. Officers. Okay, what was? Help me on that suggestion again. That we would refer, uh, Madam Chair, what I had suggested that to help in making distinct the responsibilities and the identities of the two bodies, that when we speak about SROs, we have Topeka Police Department school resource officers, so okay. that distincts them from, uh, makes them distinct from Topeka, Topeka Public Schools police officers. Okay, is that a motion? Give me a motion. I make that in a motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Uh, Liz, did you get that? Just raise your hand if you did. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, so that was one A and B? That was one A, just to clarify who we're talking about. Okay. One B, um, that's where the language says that the city, whom I assume means the police department, and the school district would meet quarterly. Again, that's pretty specific. <laughs> but if that's what y'all want, um, there just was no reference to citizens, an opportunity for citizens to have input. And so if you wanted to talk about the quarterly, that's fine. But um, maybe adding citizens and citizens in that sentence would make it clear my question is if we say it the way you, we have it mm -hmm. the, the tpd and tps would meet quarterly we're asking them something that to do something that we have, don't have any control over they may not want to meet quarterly they may well that's what's in there so i don't oh, mind that, taking it that's out why, that's why i'm <laughs> saying it yeah because as the chief said uh, we have any we don't have any purview over their police department they decide they don't want to meet quarterly they may agree with it but i don't think that in our document we should put it in there to commit them to something we aren't going to hold them be able to hold them accountable for well this last sentence it's on the second page there of those recommendations just says local school administrators and the city should meet quarterly to discuss how things are going and how practices can be improved. So do we want to take the word quarterly out so we don't put anything in there? Or could meet quarterly or anything like that? Or, or as a or should or should meet because should 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 is saying that we suggest it, but that doesn't mean that they have to do it. Um, I mean should oh uh, wait should meets in there the, so we're, we're kind of saying they should do it 
Well, we are saying that. Yeah, and I mean, we are saying that. Uh, but periodically would loosen that up a little bit. So we're not being real directive. Yeah, exactly. That's what I don't Okay, know. So, so do you want to say, and the city should meet periodically? Change that word? Take out quarterly and put periodically? I think so. And then I also think that, and citizens, that citizens should be mentioned in that string just to make it clear that we want to see parents and citizens invited to some of those conversations. And, and what happens when they're not? Well, we can leave it loose. A lot of these statements are, are pretty flexible. Yeah. That, that, that's my question. I understand where you're going, Councilwoman. Mm -hmm. But uh, saying citizens should be involved, and that's what you're saying, right? In that, in Not those... in every single meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt like you know, part of our mission here was to make sure that we advocated for a voice for citizens in these these matters. Sure, and both, I guess, the school administration and the Topeka Police Department probably could reach out to individuals or individuals could reach out to both those entities to participate, but right. you want to make sure that they do that because I know there are some schools that have a lot of participation by their parents and others not as much. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, I just want to make sure that it's a, if it's participation, it's kind of a balanced thing and to make sure that uh, there's encouragement to do that. But again, uh, well, how do we hold the citizens accountable if they don't show up? Well, this is very specific, more yeah. specific than many of them. It says SROs. The sentence before says SROs and school staff should establish personal relationships with parents through meeting with them early in the school year. And then they're never mentioned again. <laughs> and so it's words, but it, it's, a, it's a message that... That doesn't mean they can't continue to meet. That doesn't mean they can't... Absolutely. I'm just looking at what I, our message is. I, I think they should meet. I wanted to put in there more, but again... I can't. I can't do that. I can't bend it so that 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 they don't want to do it at all. And and um, I, I thought that was a start because right now they're not doing it at all. If I may, Chair, if yes, I could ask the chief right now if he has some thoughts with regards to how his Topeka Police school resource officers could facilitate. Uh, regular meetings with 501 administrative staff and parents of students. Do you have the staff? Do you have that capability? Um, again, you know, knowing that if you have one more meeting to some some parents, that's a lot to ask. I know. I know it's, it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people are working two jobs. A lot of people work uh, evenings when those meetings might occur. How would, would that happen? Do you, do you have a thought or idea how the Topeka Police SROs could facilitate that? I, I, I think uh, I, I would take advantage of this opportunity to, to make one suggestion. I, I think the, the rock that you guys are, are butting up against there is whenever it says the school this and the, I think maybe this section should just say what you want the Topeka Police Department school resource officers to do, because that's really the only thing that you have control over. Yeah. Um, certainly, we have a great working relationship with uh, the school district. We, we have regular meetings um, that occur. I was struck by what you're talking about. I mean, it's kind of the difference between public meetings and executive sessions to discuss some of the issues that city, that city officers and school staff would need to do. You couldn't do that with parents in the room because of litigation and liability, exposure, personnel matters, and those kind of things. So I think it's, it's well intended for the personal relationships. I guess I, I, I just am troubled with the same thing that you guys have been discussing is how do you make recommendations to a, a body that's outside of the city's scope and purview that hasn't really been part of this process of discussion? Um, None of that should be, 
I, I believe these meetings are taking place. I believe that you can always do better with communication and building relationships. And that's between us and the school district and school district and the parents and between us and the parents. But for a recommendation that comes out of this committee, it's interesting that that would they would encompass I think the problems that we have with all of this is language that you say the city and the school will do this mm -hmm. when really you only have purview over the city yeah so and I agree with you chief and I think that's something that we could come back to and say within our authority we would uh, encourage the Topeka Police Department SRO officers to facilitate those meetings whenever possible uh, and maybe even take a lead on it and see how, yeah. because those are those are the people we have right. some authority to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, but put the onus on the the employees that you have control yeah. over their actions. I have a, if I heard what Chief said, um, if we just left a lot of the detail out of this one, it, um, and we simply used the first three sentences. It would say school resource officers, SROs, part of the Topeka Police Department, play a significant role in building positive relationships with youth, schools, and parents. Selection of SROs must be based on an officer's suitability for daily interaction in a school setting. SROs are not enforcers of school disciplinary actions. SROs are mentors and should continue to serve in this capacity, period and just stop, define that, and say that we want to continue that relationship, but not put all the, any of that detail in? I might have stopped sooner than you were thinking, but when you said that, I thought, well, learned it in grant writing training. When in doubt, leave it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to wait till you give me specific questions. I'm trying not to overstep as Well, I resource. think you're helpful. I, I specifically left the training should incorporate the work of the National Association because that's important and we've already started that. And then also what I heard from uh, when I talked to SROs is they wanted to make sure that their training was up, up, to, um, up to par, updated to reflect the current needs of the students because some of their training is outdated. And so that's why I put that in there, um, because I thought that was very important. Um, again, this, this came from three recommendations, and so I squeezed it all into one. But I think those are, are very, very crucial parts. And they, they themselves said they wanted to make sure that they get the updated training. Kids have changed, times have changed, and they want to make sure that they are right with the change. So I, I will not agree to take that out. Well. If I may, Chair. Yes, you may. Uh, following along Councilwoman Hiller, she stopped probably just a little bit shorter than I would have. Uh, I probably would have gone all the way to the current needs of students and end it there. And the rest, um, that's what it gets into, establishing personal relationships with parents, meeting with them early in the school year. All those things will become part of, I think, that effort and action. Uh, and we don't get into local school administrator issues and and the like and I think for me that if we take it to that point it covers what you just spoke of chair of the uh, National Association and and uh, I think that's a a fair recommendation and so you're saying take out the last two sentences is that's what you're saying um, yes ma'am Okay, is that a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. I, I okay. mean, I think we can come up with a, a kind of a combo sentence if you want to, but it, it's fine to take it out as well. Okay, I mean, I, I like, we can take it out, but I think the training part was very important after I talked to the, the people okay. that are doing the work. So. All those in favor, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, it's 3-0, Liz. Tell me if you got that. Thank you. Okay. Use of force, Karen, 2A. Um, I would simply, there are, there are two things in that section. Um, 
at the beginning part, um, where it, the second sentence says this, the, this body of policy was revised on 6-18-2020 with consideration for the topics addressed. It is recommended that this policy be reviewed on an ongoing basis. Um, I, my suggestion was just to insert in there reviewed with civilian input on an ongoing basis. Doesn't say how often, doesn't say how, just says there would be an invitation. Madam Chair? Yes. A question, Councilwoman Hiller. Now, with civilian participation, could that be the Civil Service Commission? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. D not. Doesn't have to be, it doesn't say a special meeting. You know, they've got to work that out. You're not creating something else. No. Yeah. Or if, you know, if there's a special committee to review the policy, you know, use of force, you know, the chief might want to have his advisory group advise him about mm -hmm. that, might want to do, you know, elsewhere in here, the idea of periodic doing crime summits, it doesn't matter. It just says we're going to ask, okay. you know, accept it or ask for it. Is that a motion? Motion to insert with civilian input in line three. A second. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. 3-0. Liz, thank you. Uh, use of force, 2-B. Two, two um, yeah, in, the, the, in short, I'd like to take the very last sentence out. I think your second paragraph, it says, as a component of use of force, it is recommended that continued training and certification of crisis intervention teams with the use of mental health co-responders be increased. Um, the last sentence right that's proposed says it would require funding and additional police officers. I think that that first sentence stands alone better and allows the department and the community to decide how to do that. Okay. My motion would be I don't want to move too fast to that, but would be to just delete that last sentence. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Okay. Um, I just okay, want to, so, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, Karen, I kind of lost you there. I'm sorry. not comfortable with this committee uh, as part of these recommendations oh, doing oh, oh, oh. a budget oh. imperative to the council. This will require funding. Well, I, okay, so you're saying take out the last sentence. Only the last sentence. Leave okay, the fact and, and, that, you felt, and, and you felt that you could take that out, why? Um, continue the training and certification of crisis intervention teams and using mental, continuing to use mental health co-responders and increasing that, I am fine with saying. But exactly how that happens, whether there's grants from someplace else, whether it's more mental health responders or more officers, whether they're, whether it's mainstreamed further into the departments, training and so on. I don't want to go there. To me, I don't think we need to be that specific. Okay, well that was somebody's recommendation and I felt like um, it had to go on there so that our other colleagues would know that that would um, that was a concern and that it would require funding and, and additional officers. So that's, that's why I felt that that was critical to be put in there. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, I understand what uh, Councilwoman Hiller is saying. I think uh, the first part of that final paragraph, uh, in, and of, in and of itself, uh, will bring to mind for the governing body that in order for this to happen, uh, the chief will have to work with his staff, his budget, the governing body to make that happen. And uh, I think it's probably unnecessary to mention that it would require uh, additional officers and, and uh, to supplement. I mean, the chief knows his staff. He knows whether he can do it with the current staff or he can't. And, and if he can't, he'll come to the governing body with a an idea or a recommendation. I, I agree with Councilwoman Hiller's uh, request to strike that last sentence. 
Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second, right? Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? Two, one. Okay, we'll strike that. Um, number three, content of officer training. That was the question about performance reports. We've, we've addressed that one. Okay, just making sure, Karen. Thank you. Um, civilian oversight. That was addressed as well. That's the one where I suggested I wanted to add that duty. If, if where we're going is letting the Civil Service Commission be the entity that will um, take citizen complaints, um, I'd, I think we need to add that sentence so it's very clear to the citizens and to the governing body, assuming we adopt it, that, um, that there is some place for citizens to go. So I would move adding that one line to the civil service, to the civilian, to the. To the civilian. To the, yeah, to, to item number six, first paragraph, the civilian oversight section. Madam Chair? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, go that's, ahead. That's all right. I could see you were in a contemplative mode. Well, I'm so reading. Wanna... I'm just trying to read it. <laughs> Without my head banging, just trying to get it. Um, go ahead. I'd like to ask the chief, with regards to this piece that um, city code should, regarding the Civil Service Commission, should be updated to allow the group adequate access to information regarding policing practices. I think that's pretty much available already. Internal police reports as needed. That I question. To review reports of the internal police auditor or similar type of position if expanded by the city. I don't have any issue with that. And to hear citizens' concerns that have not been resolved through other methods. Um, my question is, um, as Councilwoman Hiller says, they need to have some place to go to hear their complaint. I just want to hear from the chief if he feels that those things that he has in place now and the things that the city has in place through our police auditor, our ombudsman, and our city manager, have they not been sufficient to hear police, uh, citizen complaints uh, that are brought to them? Have they fallen short somehow that they don't have a place to take their concerns to? I'm just wondering, Chief. Well, that's an interesting question that you, you posed to me. Um, I think with the, all the components that you just mentioned, and, and, and on top of that, I would add the mayor, the mm -hmm. city council, the city manager, um, the chief of staff, and just to get the complete list, the independent police auditor, the ombudsman. And then, of course, you obviously have the police department and the, the myriad of ways that a citizen can file a complaint there. And all of those steps can be done individual of each other, too. So I think that there is sufficient capacity that currently exists um, and in an era of increased skepticism to actually achieve different results by adding bureaucracy components, I think that's a little um, counterintuitive as well. But I think the short answer to the question is, is I do feel like we have a, a myriad of options um, and a lot that are outside of the police department and independent of the police department that are available to our citizens. I asked the question, uh, Madam Chair and Councilwoman, because um, I'm all for being able uh, to take a complaint somewhere. But I think we have plenty of inroads for a citizen to take a complaint, as the chief reaffirmed. Um, 
I don't want to give the impression that we're not doing a good job already uh, and that uh, when it says concerns that have not been resolved through other methods, uh, that, those resolutions sometimes aren't what the complainant wants. I know even personally in my case, if I have, have had an issue and I wanted some action, it didn't get, I didn't get what I wanted, but that didn't mean that what I wanted was the right thing. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, with our thoughts for civilian participation and input, that we don't forget what we already have in place and not jump to think that we're recommending something uh, brand new and shiny that will supersede everything that we have in place. Um, I just want to be careful that we don't give so much um, authority to ask for reports that may be com covered by confidentiality rules uh, and privacy uh, and, and expect for uh, that information to be kept uh, confidential. I just want to make sure that we don't overstep that. Um, it's important. I know uh, um, it's too easy for people to get information and not just be busting at the seams to be able to share it with somebody. And before you know, uh, before you know it, what is confidential is no longer confidential. And I do not want to put the city in a position where we have violated somebody's trust. Um, so those are my comments about that. I, I just uh, want to make sure as we move forward with the Civil Service Commission and reorganization and the reassignment of duties and responsibilities, that is a, it is in a carte blanche uh, grant that uh, uh, it supersedes everything we already have in place. I think there's a need to uh, reaffirm and strengthen what we have in place as well. Just my comments. Okay. If I may. Yes, you may. When I, when I first reached out to the chair, I, I said that the first two things I wanted to know was whether the police department thought all these points worked and whether you did. And we've, we've, we've jumped into the details. But this discussion, I think, is very important. And I don't know if we've got enough time today. I, I, obviously, the chair felt like the, the consensus was moving, building toward r ramping up the, the duties of the Civil Service Commission. And, and in part because those individuals, and she's gone ahead and drafted in here kind of a little higher, more detail about the kind of qualifications that they would have to get appointed. And that did seem where the discussion was going. Mm -hmm. um, but, but if we need to talk further before this goes, <laughs> goes, goes out about the, the, so she built in that, the additional, um, opportunity anyway to have more confidential documents and if we don't want to do that we should decide that before we recommend this to the to the public or to the to the to the council um, I thought that you know complaints about policing have happened since time immemorial <laughs> there's nothing new and it often has to do with different sections of people being treated disparately as well so it's a combination of of the policing itself and how it affects the people in the work for in the force itself, how it affects community, how people are treated, all that kind of stuff. Um, so part of what we've been dealing with again for this 18 months is where do we go? Give give us some place that we can trust that's doing oversight. It was a little unclear whether IPA would continue, but assuming it was or some sort of oversight, we need somebody who's going to review those reports. When we started getting them, nobody had time to read them regularly. But then some place that was clear police related that citizens were welcome to go, not just to have an explanation that, oh, well, it fits policy, but also if they thought that the policy should change or be examined in terms of procedures, not, not necessarily the policy, but how it's playing out, 
that there was some place to go that, that the governing body and the department had kind of designated as the place to go that would then speak up about it. So, um, I mean, we gave those, both of those duties to the Human Relations Commission, but they have a lot of other things that they're doing. I guess I assumed with this recommendation that we would probably migrate it out of the HRC, not have two, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, but the others are very general. I, I'm not comfortable with us inviting people to bring concerns if it's in effect the dead end. They're going to get referred to somebody else, an ombudsman or somebody, some other office. If we're, if we're inviting people, the, the public, to bring the concerns, we would want that very same body to have the authority to, or some direction that they should send it someplace if they've gone ahead and spent the time to hear the complaint, right? That, that's where I was going with it. And I, I thought I understood what the idea was and then just. Madam okay. Chair. Yes. <coughs> with Councilwoman's uh, comments, I, I think, uh, as we all know, this is a work in progress, but the work should be done soon. I mean, uh -huh. we've got one more meeting planned. Uh, between now and then, I think some suggestions or thoughts uh, that both of us have should be forwarded to you so that you can look at them and bring bring it bring this uh, section here into some uh, degree of finality in, in that this is will be our recommendations. I okay. I just want to be uh, considerate of of the desires of the community. But at the same time, there is some practicality that's involved here. And um, we'll put that on hold. We'll put number four on hold, if you don't mind. Is that okay? Okay. Well, and it sounds like number four is way bigger than just my one line. So it's actually, you know, recommendation number six overall, right? Mm hmm. or at least the Civil Service Commission part. Yeah. I guess that's the first two paragraphs of that. I think that Civil Service what, Commission... What, what, what I'm saying is we will put Karen's um, number four on hold right now. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go to employment decisions. Um, Karen, um, the reason why... Okay. Um, you suggested um, to add the Civil Service Commission duties would include advocating to the Topeka Police Department and our, oh, that's number four, wait a minute, we were putting that on hold. Um, you suggested put, delete the last line, insert the city should continue affirmative and creative efforts for minority and a disadvantaged recruitment and, adva and advancement with a goal that the department fully reflects the diversity of the city. So are you saying that you don't, you don't feel like that's being done right now? I said continue. It is being done. Okay. Um, and, and, and being done well as far as I'm concerned. So I, I guess I don't understand why. You, can you explain why you feel like we need to change this? Yes, you did say continue. I'm the, sorry. The change was that it... The last sentence said the city should identify partners such as Go Topeka that can support efforts to recruit officers. And I might have misunderstood the, the intent of that sentence, so maybe you can help out. What I thought of was, gosh, the department is doing some really creative recruiting in what they're doing, and to me they should, they should continue doing that. And I wasn't sure why we would mention Go Topeka only and how how um, for direct recruiting, why why we needed their help, I guess. Well, um, that was mentioned on a couple of um, rec um, recommendations. One is so that they could help um, recruit and um, help us, you know, like with the with why Topeka help them to move here and stuff like that. 
Another one was um, have go Topeka, um, and I don't remember how it was said, but it was it was to help with them to recruit minorities. And I did only, and I and I didn't I didn't want to do that. I I think if we're gonna ask go Topeka to help us, whether it's to relocate them or give them those incentives, um, I think we need to do it across the board and not just just with minorities. And so. That's why I just kind of put it like that. But but it was mentioned, and I remember in our meeting, the mayor had, um, Mayor, do you want to speak on on, on uh, one of your recommendations that you um, you thought it would be good to, whether it was uh, visit Topeka or whom, or go Topeka or whomever to try to get them involved with the with the recruitment part of it. I think recruitment is, um, I think I think they're doing a good job of, of trying to get people all over, but um, I think you had mentioned um, with the employment part on, you know, trying to see if we can give them so much money to help them get here or whatever. Well, Madam Chair, I'm, to be honest with you, I don't specifically remember making that specific recommendation, but I, I will say this. I think uh, the police department has been very innovative in their efforts to recruit. I think they're doing things that uh, are really uh, non-traditional and the results of that have been seen. If you, if we've been able to, and uh, critics who might say that we're not doing a good job of bringing uh, uh, people of color into the workforce or females are, are not paying attention. Because if you look at the workforce and you look at the recruit classes that come in here, they're very much uh, uh, a combination of all kinds of demographics. Uh, I can tell you from my experience in the police department, I have never seen that kind of uh, diverse population before until we started doing the things that are going on now. So I think the police department is doing a pretty good job of what they're doing now. If there's any concern or interest in uh, engaging the Greater Topeka Partnership, there are things that I think they maybe could contribute now that you mention it, and that is uh, maybe d uh, redefining, and we, again, don't have any control over that, over their program of Choose Topeka. If it's to encourage people to come to Topeka for those pop, uh, occupations that are critical to our community, I think police officers are critical to our community. So maybe they can be included in those people who would qualify for those incentives of Choose Topeka. Maybe not. I don't run their program. That was my thought. And th whenever they're doing their work for Visit Topeka and bringing other entities to Topeka to relocate businesses and their families, I think that they have a very much opportunity to showcase our police department. People move to a community that's safe, that they know that the community has put an effort into giving uh, safety as a priority to everyone who lives here and, and, and showcase it for those who want to choose to Topeka. So I think they have a role in, in uh, advocating and promoting what the department does already and maybe just learning a little bit of what the, the department does would uh, help them when they're uh, bringing people to Topeka. So that's, that's my uh, thought now that you brought it up, but I don't remember actually asking them to do the recruiting because I think the police department does a good job. I just think that we could use more partners in singing the praises of our city. And since they uh, represent the city as a whole and it's a socioeconomic uh, community plan, it seems appropriate that if we ask them to include uh, the population of our our community and the way we have diversified our police department is a real plus. And so uh, giving them that opportunity to speak on behalf of the city and the police department, I think is a good idea. But I don't know that we need their direct input into, into doing the recruiting themselves. Chair, Madam Chair. Sure. Yes, Karen. I think I understand better what my confusion was and maybe have a, an alternate suggestion. Um, the first two sentences in, 
in this employment decisions have to do with us re reporting to the, to the state commission to make sure that bad apples are on record and don't get hired someplace else in Kansas. And so, and I'm, I'm fine with that language. Yeah. And so partly this, uh, the, this last sentence about using Go Topeka was just kind of like, what does that have yeah. to do with um, recording the personnel files of bad apples? So if instead what we did was kept that, but, but made a second paragraph, what I felt was we were missing the affirmative stuff that we're doing, that we're doing well, and, and that maybe somebody like Go Topeka could supplement, but not be the only thing we were doing. And so if, if this, this sentence that I suggested would, be, um, would come in and, and be the the lead sentence for that second paragraph, and then go ahead and leave that one sentence that mentions Go Topeka or other possible partners that could help us, I think it would make more sense. And I'm much more comfortable with leaving it for the Choose Topeka reason or mm -hmm. other things that people could do. It just, just was way out of context. <laughs> okay. Is that I would, I would, is that a motion? Do you have a sentence that you want to insert? I, you know, yes, and, and I didn't, we kind of jumped into my list of things I had. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I thought Mike had a list. No, we sent it to you, and then you just kind of jumped right into it. Um, Chief doesn't either, but he could. <laughs> he's, a, he's a mind reader. He, he, he's, he's, he's doing pretty well, I'd say. Both of them are. I am so sorry. I thought I was the only one that, I'm sorry, I, I should have made sure that everybody had those as well. Um, I, I, yeah, I just didn't, didn't see the traffic signals when you jumped into it, so I'm going to let it go. So it, it just says, the city should continue affirmative and creative efforts for minority and disadvantaged recruitment and advancement with a goal that the department fully reflects the diversity in the community. And that would then be followed by your, um, the city should identify partners such as Go Topeka that can support efforts to recruit officers. That would follow that broader statement. Which one is Number that? five, Mike. Okay. After all this, I'll bring you, well, you've got one, don't you? Or did you give it back to okay. Madam Chair, with regards to number five, and uh, I should have, uh, mentioned this earlier, wherever we speak of uh, minorities, I know that uh, being one, <laughs> as well as Councilwoman Hiller being one, that I would prefer myself, people of color and women, and, and say that specifically rather than just minority, uh, because that... Uh, I think that's a more recognized term in this uh, decade. So I, I know I refer to minority on a fairly regular basis, but visiting with the public and community leaders, they feel that a more appropriate uh, term is people of color and women. I would respectfully, since I'm buried in that all the time with Topeka United and, and Mosaic Partner Pairs, there are many other minorities than just color. There are as ethnicities, religions, um, culture, if you want to call it that, um, gender identity, disabilities, abilities and disabilities, all of which everybody ex in those classifications except are minorities, and then there's women who aren't a minority. <laughs> but minority is a generally more accepted to, well, otherwise you list all eight or ten or whatever, well, age as well. You talk to different people than I talk to. The, I, I, I know that you, you're you involved with the community and you hear their feedback, but the strong feedback <laughs> I get is that they're, they're tired of hearing being called minorities. They want to be identified as people of color. And so I just bring that to the discussion. Well, I think we would need to go back to the string that we used in the Human Relations Commission ordinance then that, that itemizes all of them because otherwise you're leaving out all those other, I, I hear you and I know, but there are more minorities than there are people who are, 
who are racially a minority that don't look like it and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but we go down that go down that rabbit hole. And we'll, right hand, left hand, uh, you know, uh, you could get that list could go on forever and ever. So um, I don't want to debate that piece. Uh, whatever uh, the committee and the governing body feels comfortable with, I just want to make sure that uh, for the people I talk to. Uh, Okay, let's let's again put that on hold, and we'll come back to that as well. Let's put our minds to it and send me send me your recommendation, okay? Okay. So, so we can move forward. Um, this is a new one, community policing. Yeah. That that was not in anybody's recommendation. So this is this is brand new. Um, I, I get where you're going, but we um, we we've, we've got to. We, we've got to keep moving forward. We can't keep adding stuff. I felt like we've covered everything. And I don't know, wh where are you going? Explain this to me, Karen, so, so I can kind of understand where you're going with me. This Here. comes from representing neighborhood. This is about policing. Um, it certainly has to do with race as well, of having, the, um, having community policing in my neighborhoods. It's come and gone and come and gone. Um, it's It's just been part of the whole issue about policing and who you can go to and who can help you prevent and resolve issues in your neighborhood. It's but a isn't, suggestion. That, isn't that the will of the, I mean, the chief is the one that um, appoints um, his, his, um, his staff. So I know we've had, a, we've had chiefs that have taken them out. We've had chiefs that have put them in. Um, I, I think that goes back to, to the chief, and I think that goes back to us. Um, I, I know um, the last chief took it out. I know as soon as the current chief um, heard that we wanted him back in there, he, he, he rearranged and he put him back in there. So um, I, I, I don't know. Mike, your thoughts on it? This is kind of new. Well, I've always been an advocate for community policing, and, and I know since I joined the department back in the early 70s, community policing has been a discussion within yeah. the Topeka Police Department, and it has evolved over the decades, and that is what police work is. It adapts to the situations of a community, and so whether it's in or out or not, it may exist in some form or another, but there isn't a police department that is gonna be very effective without some aspect of community policing. I think our department uh, knows that and has tried what they can to continue that program. I don't think there's any effort, there's never been any that I understand criticism or that we would reassign people who are in community policing to some other duty so i think unless the chief can correct me i don't think there's any intent to uh go away from community policing is there chief no and and, and i i've heard you say on any number of occasions too i think sometimes we get a little too focused on the the officers who are specifically denoted as community police officers yeah. i mean i know you have a much broader feel and, and sense for all police officers or community police officers mm -hmm. to some regards but i think this is specific to those designated officers, but no, there's, it's always going to be an effective piece of any police department that I can imagine. Yeah, and, and I agree, Chief, and, and that's been an argument <laughs> I've had for a long time with uh, when I was still serving in the police department and, and having just community police officers doing what every police officer should be doing, because I think then that says that, okay, it's his or her job, but not mine, and I think we have to quit yeah. thinking in that realm that everybody who's got a badge on is a community policing officer that those kinds of ethics and those kinds of service to the community is their bread and butter it isn't just one unit so uh, I, I I'm always cautious about just referring to a community policing unit or officers because I just think the the uh, the concept of community policing should be department-wide uh, I've often asked sometimes and maybe this is out of turn, but how do we evaluate that 
officers do practice that because unless things have changed, there was never anything on a, uh, say, an evaluation sheet or, or uh, a run sheet that showed I did X amount of activities during the day that relates to a community activity because sometimes they just don't have the time during the day, but a lot of times they do. And if you, if you make it part of everybody's responsibility, I think that we're going to get a better uh, result for our efforts in community policing. I agree. I mean, I, I think your experience shows through, and I certainly would reiterate, add mine on to it, too. If you have a unit that's specifically in charge of drug enforcement, that doesn't abdicate every other officer's right. responsibility to enforce drug laws or, right. or traffic safety as a traffic division. So now regular field operation officers don't yeah. write tickets when they see violations. It, it's a very holistic approach. Um, I, I certainly agree with that. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Well, I must have said too much. She walked off and left me. No, no, I'm right here. Um, and, and, and I like your stance on that, Chief, and I'll tell you why. So at our last meeting, the Chief came in and he said, I took what you said to heart. You need to get in the community. And he claimed he had some red dirt from um, a stolen car. I asked him to send it over to the KBI, but he refused to, so I, that let me know. I don't know if he was telling me the truth or not, if that was dirt from being outside pushing somebody. But, um, you know, I, I, I am going to say this. I'm very proud of our chief. Um, when I told him he needed to get in the community, he, he didn't take that lightly. and. He's been riding around in my district trying to find this this wrong and that wrong. And, you know, he got a stolen car. He's making arrests. So he's not just sitting behind a desk. So, you know, I, I think that says a lot. He's not just the chief shooting out orders. He's he's out there in the red dirt somewhere. So um, I think I think that says a lot. And I, I think once we get the whole department to understand that, that it, it's it's not a that's yours. That's that's mine. It's it's all of ours. Once we get on that same note, we'll we'll be a better department. So um, so how do we feel about this? Do we want to bring this back as well, or do we want to vote it up or down? I I feel like this is. I personally feel like this is um, the first time I've seen it. Um, I personally feel like it's it's the chief's decision. But as long as we have a chief, I'm gonna I'm gonna advocate for it because. I know the importance of it. Um, I asked the chief to attend the NIA meeting last night. Um, I can't think of Amanda's last name, but she's one of our um, community policing um, officers, and she's built a very good rapport with these people who are having a lot of chop shops and, and problems on this one street, and she's done a great job. Um, and they feel comfortable talking to her and knowing that something's going to get done. So I, 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 I've been around a long time. I, I see the importance of it. Karen, I'm sorry. Well, and that's why I brought it up. Um, it, 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 it's an underlying thing. It's not something that was a subject um, actively as we went through this issue about use of force and so on. But it's for prevention. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a numbers game in many ways, just like the example that you gave where, yes, we absolutely want every officer to be oriented toward problem solving and prevention and keeping their eyes and ears open about what's going on. But literally, especially in our districts where there's more um, criminal activity or more inclination toward that, the, the officers who are there who specifically, and the, the reason I phrased it the way I did as a central point of contact for the residents of the assigned territory as well as the TPD, regarding both prevention and issues is because it's a it's a, literally a numbers thing and and I've lived with that act you know lived in central Topeka for almost 50 years but you know actively representing that district now for going on 14 and 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 the the difference that it makes when they're when that officer is available and when they get used by the department for their intel just because they've got they're, they're planted 
in, in that area makes so much difference. And, and it, it strays into all of these issues of whether use of force is needed, how you treat somebody, you know, whether an is, issue needs to be de-escalated because you already know the people and, and so on. Just, just makes a difference, and we're trying to save lives and have everybody come home, as you so uh, appreciated seeing that written in everybody come home at every night. If, if it's not the right time to talk further about it, I think it's definitions again, but uh, as I was reviewing the various things that had come in, I, I brought with me a letter from a constituent that was written on April 18th. So, and I don't know if he writes to everybody or just me, but it was really well done in terms of all the good things that are happening with the department and things that, that he, he thought as well. So with the, with the school experience, the, um, the couple of letters that we've gotten, and then that letter, I just, to refresh and be prepared for today, just wanted to, to check out issues and that issue of community policing um, I thought, you know, we haven't talked about it much, but it's underlying in this whole issue. Let me put it down. If, if worrying about the definitions or whatever is just too much for right now, I'm okay with it not advancing, but I felt like I needed to bring it forward. I appreciate that. Um, can I get a, um, if we want to talk about community policing more, um, if we need more input, can we raise our right hand? I want to take a vote to see, do we need to move forward? If, uh, do we need to, um, if you want to talk about it more, raise your right hand. If we feel we've discussed it enough, raise your right hand. Which, which if, you, if, if we feel we've discussed it enough and not adding yes. it. <laughs> and why? I'm sorry. I, I want to make sure I raise my right hand for the right thing. Okay, just vote with me. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so. Do we, Karen brought this forward. Do we want to, do we want more discussion on community policing? And, and um, if you feel that, that you, that you want more discussion, raise your right hand. If you feel that you're okay with the discussion that we've had, or. A, a no right hand means it's over. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. yes. First right hand means it's not over. Second right hand means it's over. Number one. Number two. Am I the only one voting? You 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 lost me, Chair. We thought we were done because nobody raised their right hand the first time. Would you like more discussion on this? Let me put it like that. No. Karen, it's it's okay if we drop it. Okay, I don't see that we need more. Okay, right. so okay, so we're good with that. <laughs> I did lose you. <laughs> Chief, do you have some water you could spray on him? Some holy water? I'm all I'm all out of my bottle, unfortunately. You have to use spit to fill it up. Okay, okay. Is there anything else to come before this board? Well, what are we going to do if we have two things that are on hold? We're going to vote on them. We're going to we're going to bring them back. We're going to vote on them, and the and the vote wins. If it's two to one, the vote wins, just like earlier was two to one. So we'll we'll come back with another. Um, what I'll do is take both of your both of your wording, put it together, and see if we can get the wording right. Send it back out to you before next next week's meeting. See if we can uh, get that right, and if we if we can't, then we're going to have to vote on it. Um, and if if not, we'll 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 figure it out. It'll be figured out. Trust me. Um, I just want to say that we talked about the SROs today a little bit at length um, on March nineteenth, um, twenty twenty one, um, or you can ask Liz. We talked about the SROs. Um, um, we had a, a full meeting on that if they'd like to go back to that. School resource officers. Um, I think overall, I'm pleased with this document. I, I can't say enough of that. I'm, there was a time I couldn't sleep. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the document. Um, I think 
just like anything else, and like I've said for years, we've got to educate the public. We've got to educate the public on our part, um, even when it comes to the school resource officers. Um, it was very noted in both the states and our um, and, and and in our um, what am I trying to say here? In our discussions, it's very, very noted. I think sometimes, um, even with Karen, what she brought forward, I think sometimes parents are confused on what to do and who to go to. Um, not, I don't feel like it's because it's uh, Topeka Police Department or SROs, but I, I feel like it's it's more they they're they're looking for a better answer. But I would advise them to also remember that they have their school board president and their school board members to, to look at as well. Um, because I do refer a lot of people, you know, they, they come to, the, to me sometimes and ask me questions that have happened on school things and I do refer them to our, their board members um, because they, they know more of their rules. Um, is there anything else to come before for today? Madam Chair, I just wanna make sure uh, we're going to send you our thoughts on number six, civilian oversight, correct? It would be Karen's number four and five, and I will have Liz um, reiterate that. Yeah, it's, it, it's my number four and five, but you're okay. right. It's number six and number... Gotcha. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure. I, yep, and I will, have, I will have Liz reiterate that. Um, I was going to say tomorrow, but today's Friday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, I will have her reiterate that. Our next uh, meeting is June the 17th at 2 o'clock. We will have public input. It will be four minutes per participant, and we will, we will take their questions, and we will get back with them with answers. Um, so it won't be done that particular day unless we have time. I don't know how much time, I mean, how many people will sign up, so I don't know how much time will be allotted for. So um, if time allows, we'll go back to um, Karen's four and five. If, if, um, if time doesn't allow, then we might just have to have a a follow-up meeting after the public public input. If um, I don't want to do that, but it looks like we'll probably have to do that. And, and we still have time. We still have time. Um, are there any any other questions or comments? I just want to say, uh, as I said at the beginning of the last meeting, I think you did a stellar job on this. I appreciate the conversation today. I, I think the responsiveness to citizens and the words do matter. So appreciate your time and, and attention all the way up till now and today as well. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. We've all done a stellar job. It wasn't easy taking three people's recommendations, putting them all together, especially when the mayor's had coffee at Lolita's on 6 and Brander before he came and doesn't remember anything. I don't know what she puts in her coffee, but I'll go get some on the way home. <laughs> I've seen you coming out of there. Um, but again, we've, we've had a lot of information, we've had a lot of discussion, and we've had a lot of presentation. And we have, as Karen would say, I wouldn't say it, but Karen would say we've had a, di a deep dive. We've done a deep dive. <laughs> yeah. So um, as Joe Ledbetter would say, we did our due diligence. So um, I want to thank committee members for being patient and um, we're, we're, we're almost at the end of our rope here. Okay? Is there anything else to come? Don't forget the Juneteenth parade tomorrow. Um, anything else? If not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. You take Thank you, care. Chair. <laughs>